Hello and welcome back to the Ash and Stone channel. My name is Chris and today I'll show you how I'm painting my Oathmark Elf Light Infantry as Woodland Stalking Rangers. I start with a black undercoat and I'll be grabbing some Vallejo Basic Skin Tone to start the skin, funnily enough. It takes a couple of coats to get a decent coverage over the black undercoat, but once that's achieved, I hit the skin with a wash of Army Painter Flesh Wash to shade the details. While I wait for that to dry, I get the Vallejo Dark Sea Blue out, a slightly greeny blue, and paint the exposed trousers. They are then given a light coat of Army Painter Dark Tone to shade them. By this time, the flesh wash should have dried, and I use basic skin tone to highlight the high points on the face, like the nose, brow, upper lip, and chin. While working on the face, let's do the eyes, starting with black. It's certainly not the easiest job to paint the eyes of figures with hoods, but hey, why not? A small horizontal line of black is enough here. Then the white comes out, and we add a small dot to either side of the eye. This can be very difficult with the hood in the way. Sometimes you can use the hood as a guide to slide the brush down to get the outer whites. Other times it's easier to just forget about the outside dots. It took me three tries to get them to a point I was happy with on this miniature, and I had to do it off camera in the end, but we got there. To paint the tunic, shirt and cloak, I pick four colours to mix and match. Two greens, Vallejo Russian Green and Vallejo Russian Uniform World War II, and two browns, Vallejo Beige Brown and Vallejo Dark Flesh Tone. This gives me a nice mix of vibrant and muted colours. I'll vary where these colours are applied to give the models an irregular look. In this case, starting with beige brown, I paint the undershirt below the tunic and on the long sleeves. A couple of coats gives us a nice even coverage, and when that's dry, I give it a shade using Army Painter's Strong Tone. When that is dried, I go back to beige brown and reapply the base colour, leaving the dark wash in the recesses. A highlight is mixed by adding in a little Vallejo Iraqi sand to the beige brown, and that's then applied to the high points of the folded cloth. Then I move on to the greens. I paint the tunic with Russian green, and the cloak and hood with Russian uniform. Once again, a couple of coats are needed to obtain a nice even base colour. When they have dried, I give them a wash with Army Painter Military Shader to shade them, before we follow the same steps as the brown. Reapply the base colour, leaving the shading in the recesses, and highlight with a little Iraqi sand mixed in. On this second figure, I used Russian Uniform for the shirt, Dark Flesh Tone for the tunic, and Russian Green for the cloak and hood. The dark flesh tone is given a wash of Army Painter Strong Tone, before reapplying the base and highlighting with a little Iraqi sand mixed in. I stick to green for the cloaks of all of my range of figures, just varying the shade a little to give them a unified look. Back to the first figure, and the tunic trim is given a coat of dark flesh tone to make it stand out from the green tunic itself, and the brown shirt below it. And that's highlighted by, you guessed it, mixing in a little Iraqi sand. For the second figure, I used Russian green on the dark flesh tone tunic. Now it's time to do the leather, so out comes the Vallejo chocolate brown, and the boots, quiver, gloves, and belt are all given a base coat. As usual when I paint leather, a single pass is enough because any unevenness in the colour just adds to the effect. Vallejo Flat Earth is used next to hit the points of leather that would see the most wear, 
such as the toes of the boots, knuckles of the gloves, and any edges that are likely to catch or rub against things. I use Vallejo Iraqi sand to base coat the bow and arrows. Once again, a couple of coats are needed to achieve an even result. The Army Painter Strong Tone comes out again to give all of the areas of leather a generous coat, and I give the belly of the bow a light wash, as well as the arrows in the quiver, and any areas of the bow and arrows in contact with something else whether that be gloves, arrowhead or fletching. This helps define the transition between the colours and the wash on the back of the bow hints at the two-tone heartwood sapwood construction of a traditional yew longbow. Vallejo black grey is used to paint the recurved tips of the bow, indicating a horn knock for the string, and Iraqi sand is reapplied to the arrows, especially the ones in the quiver, to brighten them up again after the wash. The arrow fletchings are given a base coat of Vallejo Sky Grey, followed by a highlight of white. Vallejo Steel is used on the areas of metal, in this case the arrow head and belt buckle, and then Army Paint a Dark Tone is lightly applied to define the socket of the arrow head and to pick out the details of the buckle. Then we can give the model a blast with Tamiya Flat Clear to remove any shine and protect the paint job. When that's dry, the edges of the arrowhead are given a quick sharpen using Vallejo Steel to put some shine back where we want it. And then it's on to basing. I do my usual grout thing, painting the rim black, and after adding static grass, I add a forest floor mix made up from tea straight out of the bag, heresy I know, and a little green and black foam flock. This is piled on, and the base is given a tap so that it settles down into the static grass, giving us a woods edge vibe. It's glued down by dropping a little watered down PVA from a syringe, which it quickly soaks up. And there we go, some camouflage rangers, ready to strike at their foes from the woods. I do hope that you have found the video useful. The Elf Light Infantry are definitely one of my favourite of the Oathmark kits. They're nice and clean, and they paint up ridiculously easily. Anyway, thank you very much for watching. Let me know what you thought, or how you've painted your Elf Light Infantry in the comments below. A big thank you to my supporters on Patreon. Your continued support means the absolute world to me. Anyway, we will see you all next time. Cheers!